Welcome on stage, Brett Fairweather. Because the aerobics is so boom, I could project. I didn't have to worry about anyone else. I could be a star. I think every performer has to be a little bit of a show off to be brilliant. When you're starting out, when you're 18, you just want to pump, you know, pump on. You'd read the Arnold Schwarzenegger books. I thought I'd join the local gym on the North Shore and I started doing the weights there. And the music was going through these aerobic classes. So I thought, oh, this looks kind of cool because I love music. So I joined in, rushed into class and it killed me because they were doing a lot of repetitions and I'd only do 10 reps of a high weight and then they kept going and going and I realised it was a tough workout. There's so many things that have come in in my time. When I first started, it was Jane Fonda, uh, Judy Shepard Missit from Jazzercise, and then Step. Step aerobics was the, the next big thing, and then it was Tybo, Billy Blanks came in, and I know Philip Mills uh, had a lot to do with bringing his version of Jazzercise into New Zealand in the late 70s. Aerobics really boomed in town halls all over New Zealand and flocked with hundreds and hundreds of women going to it, the leg warmers. It was hugely popular. I think it was liberating for, for people. There was a young lady I met called Lisa Jurakovic. I didn't know at the time, but she was the 1987 New Zealand aerobic champion. And when I saw her one day do a demonstration, I was blown away with what you can do. I met Brett and I could see he was really into it. Um, a showman and very um, high energy. So he definitely had the right attributes to go on and do competitive aerobics. We're all kind of a little bit of show-offs, <laughs> but in a good way. She was my, one of my mentors from when I first started. He said, you take my class, you can take my class, this is how you're gonna learn. I remember Brett's first um, title, because it was after mine. So I was 1987 and he was after me, 1988. There's a few moves that, um, should I say, he stole. <laughs> no total move is ever original. Yeah, he was inspired by me, but I'm inspired by others. We're all, in, we're all out there to give inspiration of some sort. Well, I was so nervous when I competed in Japan. I'd come from New Zealand. This is, there was maybe 15 countries competing. And what I learned was New Zealand's actually very athletic. We came in with an extra athletic energy. We didn't know it at the time. And I think that's, that really made the difference with my personality and the way I choreographed. I remember being nervous. Your heart rate is going like this, and it all um, gets put into check when you have to hit the music because you've worked on your routine, so you've got to be able to keep in time to the beat of the music. So if you're so nervous, you're going to race the music or you're going to be behind the beat. I think my timing slipped up. Uh, I just had to pull out on everything that I had. So it was a real shock uh, and uh, an incredible uh, joy to win it and to see that New Zealand flag going up and hear our national anthem and stand on the podium and to think I could be a world champion, it was, uh, it was quite unbelievable really. So when I won the 1990 World Cup, everything changed. So I could walk down the street and you can pretty much guarantee that someone could be that aerobics guy. <laughs> and you, you could see the heads turn. So for about four or five years, I was touring the world as a world aerobic champion. I went to 23 different countries, and that's how I earned my money. People were paying me to travel to their country, paying me to do classes, sharing our love for what we do. It was fabulous. It was incredible. There was a clip that went on the home show, 
and then they showed me doing some aerobics and then you know Paul Holmes classic clip was real men mow lawns <laughs> I had to I had to laugh at that so you know there was a whole heap of stories about you, you know it's not a real sport or um, only gay people do it or, you know that's that sort of thing we were looked at as a bit of freaks really I suppose to a degree uh, from the general public you just don't worry about what people say you just get on and do it The show. It's changed so much, you know, the aerobics from the 80s. Today I look at these routines and I don't relate to them. I honestly don't. They don't have the musical interpretation like I was doing with my influences. All the moves are from a gymnastic competition. When you look at a, an aerobics timetable now, or we call it group fitness to be honest, there's just so much on it, you know conditioning, cardio, boxing, pump, spin, yoga, pilates, bar, the list goes on, it's a mile long. I don't even like the fact that they call it aerobics, because to me it's, it's not aerobics anymore. They don't have the soul, so it's sterile, they've ruined it. It's definitely changed, and I wouldn't say that it's for the better or the worse, it's just changed, that's life, you know. And then you're only on for 20 minutes? From there, you've got an eight-minute trip through to the next school, mm. and you need to be on there for 9.45. Yep. From there, you're literally 20 minutes. You've, I've allowed you 10 minutes. And I launched Jump Jam in the early 2000s. It was really just an extension of what I was doing, bringing in a lot of animation, a lot of character, fun. Jump Jam's been in over 90% of schools. You ask anyone about ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah, ting, tang, walla, walla, bing, bang, or picking coconut from the coconut tree since 2001, uh, how popular that is. They don't come to, you know, de-stress or they know they have to lose weight or to get fit or their doctor sent them there. They come to have fun, so it's a party class. For me turning up, woohoo! <laughs> it's the best job. So you ready for some jump jam? Yeah! Okay. And that is probably my most uh, proudest achievement is that I can take my sport and I can spread it wide across New Zealand. I can still see the, the high and low impact mix definitely coming back. There are a few old school instructors doing it. You'll probably see them advertised as retro classes. And the best one that I know of is Lisa Jurakovic. She's still teaching. I just wanted to bring back that fun feeling that, that um, you know, exercise doesn't have to be always so serious and we're not all training for the Olympics. So in, in a way, my retro class is like the, the adult version of Jump Jam, you know, just go, going crazy to great beats. I'll hold 80s close to my heart. <laughs> Woo! Oh! Walk around! Last year was my biggest year ever. At 55, I did 500 schools. And I'm up for another 500 this year. I'm going to keep going until my body packs up. <laughs> I don't know how long I can keep going for. I have to pace myself. I have to listen to my body I have to, before it, it says, Stop!